Hi there, and thank you for your interest in Student Success Plan. In this brief video, I'm going to cover some of the other tools that uh, haven't been covered in the other uh, short videos on SSP. So these tools include the intake tool, the email student tool, the accommodation tool, the documents tool, and the notes tool. So we'll start out by looking at the intake tool. The intake tool is basically a survey that uh, is electronic in nature and is sent or can be sent to students by an advisor electronically. I'll show you how that's done real quick by jumping over to uh, selecting a student and then clicking the edit student button. You can see that I've got a button here to send the student intake uh, request to the student uh, and it'll tell me when the last request was sent and it'll tell me when the request was completed if the student completed it. So assuming that this student had not completed it, I could simply check this box, save it, and the student would receive an email with a link and uh, that would give them access to the intake form or their intake form. The intake form, as I mentioned earlier, is a survey that is sent to a student. The purpose of the intake form is to have the student uh, self-report on some issues that they may be having, some challenges that they may be having um, that aren't necessarily immediately evident to an advisor. This is really uh, to fill out the advisor's um, kind of holistic picture of the student, their goals, uh, their plans, um, and the challenges that they uh, may have being successful at your institution. So I'm going to walk through each of the uh, tabs here on the intake tool. Keep in mind that much of this information or some of this information is customizable. So there is some uh, work that can be done to uh, change questions or adjust questions slightly, um, but that really is on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I would not call the intake tool fully customizable, um, as are many of the other uh, tools within SSP. So first we've got the uh, CDA completion date. So CDA is the confidential, Confidentiality Disclosure Agreement date. Uh, there is a confidentiality agreement that they will sign uh, electronically um, that is customizable. Um, it it's, uh, can be changed or adjusted uh, as each institution sees fit and uh, configured within SSP. Once that's accepted, uh, the student is basically offering information and giving you permission to review the information. Then I've got an intake completion date as well. So I can see here, some of this information is just uh, student information. You can see by the synced uh, notation here on the left that this information comes from the student information system. Uh, I can edit this information, but it'll just be overwritten by the student information system uh, upon the next update, which likely is overnight. I've got alternate phone numbers, an alternate address, so basic uh, information about the person or the student themselves. In the next tab, I've got a number of uh, demographic type uh, questions and information. Um, I've got uh, four here at the top, marital status, ethnicity, race, and gender, uh, that you can see are synced. This is uh, information that comes in from the student information system stuff that uh, most institutions already know about certain students. Down below, I've got U.S. citizen, country of citizenship, military, veteran uh, affiliation and status. And we begin getting into some of the other questions that are posed to the student. Um, one is a, uh, a primary caregiver. If you have children, uh, ages, child care, employment, et cetera. Uh, the next tab covers educational plan, so what the student's status is, um, 
Are they a transfer student? Are they a current student, et cetera? Uh, questions about their parents, uh, special needs or accommodation, and uh, typical grade level in high school. Moving on to educational level, this is a fully customizable list. Uh, so this can be, can be changed uh, however you see fit at your institution. Basically, it's just asking them at what level of education have they completed up to this point. Next is educational goal. So what specific goals do they have? Uh, if they have a planned major, how sure are you about your major? Have you decided on a career or occupation? All of these type of questions will inform uh, an academic advisor upon review. Um, some maybe topics of conversation that the advisor may want to have with the student. Um, confident in abilities, information about academic programs, um, is that's necessary, registration load, and so on. The next tab, uh, again, a completely customizable list here. Um, how do they intend to pay for college? So um, this would raise financial aid type uh, questions or red flags, uh, assuming they didn't have a way to pay uh, for college. And then one of the most important um, questions that is asked in the intake form are the challenges that the uh, student sees that may be barriers to them uh, to succeeding academically. Again, this is a customizable list. These are just the top 20 or so that come uh, with student success plan, but uh, these can be um, adjusted and edited as you see fit at your institution. So once these are done, um, <clears throat> uh, the student, the, the format that the student would see would be somewhat different than uh, this format. Uh, they would see it um, more in a website type format without the, necessarily the uh, uh, tabs as you see here. This is just the way that SSP from the advisor's point of view displays that information. But uh, much of this information would be um, just in more in the form of a survey for the student themselves. So that's the intake. Again, the purpose of the intake, it doesn't have to be used, but it is just used for uh, these, provide a survey or a forum for the student to self-report um, on a lot of uh, kind of personal, more personal related um, items that may affect their academic success at your institution. So that covers intake. I'm gonna jump down to the email student um, tool. So email student is just like it says. It uh, is a way to generate an email within SSP to a specific student. If you recall in the managing caseload video, if you saw that, there is a way to select multiple students uh, from either your caseload, your watch list, or from search results and send all of those students the same email. The interface for that is much the same as this, uh, but this is just designed to send a single email to the student uh, whose file I'm in, which I can see up here is David Robinson. One of the nice pieces about uh, using this tool is that I can record this email as a journal entry simply by clicking this uh, checkbox. And then as soon as I do that, a confidentiality level pops up. So since this is gonna be an entry in the student's journal, uh, I would like to be able to assign a confidentiality level to it. You can see with the red asterisk there, that's required. I'm gonna go ahead and choose everyone. If you have questions about confidentiality level and what that means, uh, I recommend you look at the, uh, or view the journal and action plan um, video as that explains it a little bit better and in more detail. So I can send to the school address. If there is an alternate address, that'll be displayed here. I can check this box to send it. I can manually add any CCs um, in this field here. And then I just have a subject and a body. Uh, of the email. Um, really, the only advantage here between um, using SSP to send the email to the student and using Outlook or uh, your local desktop uh, email client is that you have the ability to save the uh, 
uh, email as a journal entry and apply a confidentiality level to it. So simple as that for email student. Next, we'll jump down to accommodation. So I'll review this briefly, but generally speaking, uh, this tool is here uh, for a coach login on our demo site. But uh, generally speaking, there are some pretty strict privacy uh, regulations and laws around uh, uh, accommodations for students. And so typically, if this is used at all, it's used only by the disability office. Um, and they have access to it and no other roles within SSP would have access to this. So I'll walk through this real quickly. Um, it's got basic um, general information here. I've got agency contacts. Um, a lot of this is customizable as well. I've got disability. Uh, so this would be a list of um, any disabilities that the student may have. Uh, this is also a customizable list. Uh, disposition, so this is customizable as well, and again, is just uh, used for um, the disability office to populate, and then the accommodations that have been granted to the student. This is again a customizable list, generally corresponds with the disability tab as far as which accommodations are provided, and uh, these are selected. Again, you'll notice there aren't any confidentiality levels. Uh, within here because typically it is only the uh, disability office that has access to the accommodation tool. So pretty much nobody outside of that office, if that's the case, would have access to see anything entered in this tool. Okay, uh, next is the documents tool. So documents tool um, is simply a repository to upload documents, uh, PDF files, um, JPEG, PNG, BMP, uh, those type files, uh, Word documents, um, Excel spreadsheets, or similar files. Um, and simply to do that, I can just click Add. It's going to ask me to browse for the file. I browse for it on my local machine or a, or a connected server. Uh, I can put a comment, a name, and a confidentiality level attached to that specific document. I could click Save, and it will go through the upload process to include that document within the student's file. Uh, in order to see that document, I would see it listed here. Um, the Edit button, I wouldn't be able to edit a document that would allow me to edit the, uh, the window here if there were documents here. But um, SSP does not have the capability of editing, let's say, a PDF document or filling out a PDF form. This is simply a repository to store um, files that are in that format within the student's file that can then be uh, obviously downloaded uh, by selecting it. It can be downloaded uh, by a different uh, coach or somebody else that has access to the document and has the appropriate confidentiality levels. So that pretty much covers the documents tool. The notes tool is probably the least used tool within SSP. So in most instances, we don't even include this tool within uh, the implementation. The purpose of the notes tool is, and it's, it probably could be named better or more logically, but what it uh, does and the information it houses is if you're currently using, or in the past you've used, a application, a case management application similar to SSP, you'll obviously want to import a lot of the information from that application into Student Success Plan. And the notes tool is where we do that. So like I said, uh, very lightly used uh, most of the time uh, when institutions use Student Success Plan, they are using it for the first time and they're moving from a more manual, um, hands-on, um, analog approach to case management and uh, student advising, um, and then jumping into SSP for the more digital management um, web-based solution. So um, 
Therefore, notes is, like I said, very uh, not very widely used. But that is really the purpose of the application is only for institutions that are currently using a similar but different application for case management. And then uh, the notes tool is what is used to uh, migrate that information from that system into Student Success Plan. So I hope uh, that covers for you uh, all of the ancillary tools that aren't covered specifically in other videos. Thanks for your time.